Hello, welcome to Storytime. Today we've got a story from the Brothers Grimm called Bearskin. But before we start the story, let's start with our song. Hello friends, hello friends, hello friends, I'm glad to see you here. Once upon a time, there was a young fellow who enlisted as a soldier, and he became so brave and so courageous that he was always at the front ranks during a battle. And as long as the war lasted and all went well, he was paid and he was good at what he did. But peace came. And when peace came, he was discharged from the army and his captain told him, go home, go wherever you want, do whatever you like. You're freed from the army service. But the young soldier had no home to go to. And he found that he didn't know how to cope in the world anymore. He was so used to being in a war. So he set out on a hike. By and by, he came to a circle of trees and he sat down. It was so sad. He considered his fate. I have no money. All I know how to do is be a soldier. And now since there is peace, there's no need of me. Perhaps I shall starve to death, he thought. And all at once, he heard a rustling. And as he looked around, he saw a stranger standing right there in front of him, dressed in a gray coat. And he looked very, very important. I know quite well what you need, said this being. Gold and other valuables you shall have as much as you can spend. But first, I must know whether you are a coward or not. So I don't put my money in a foolish place. What? said the soldier. A soldier and a coward that cannot be. You put me to the test. Well then, said the stranger, look behind you. The soldier did, and he saw a vicious dog which eyed him ferociously. Oh no, he cried, I will tickle you nose you, that dog, and you shall no longer be able to grumble. And he cornered the dog and put a muzzle on him so that he could only, but he couldn't open his mouth and actually do any harm. And the stranger said, I see quite well then that you are not lacking in courage. But there is one more test you must pass. Pass. If it does not interfere with my future happiness, said the soldier, I won't hesitate. Well, you have to decide that for yourself, said the stranger. For the next seven years, you must not take a bath, not comb your hair, not trim your beard, or cut your fingernails. And then I will give you this coat and you must wear it every day, all day, and all night for the next seven years. If you die within those seven years, you are mine. But if you live, you are rich and free for all your life long. The soldier thought a moment. He thought about his great needs and remembering how often he had braved death, he said, I agree, I accept your offer. Thereupon, the stranger took off the gray coat, handed it to the soldier and said, whenever you put your hands in the pockets of your coat, when you have it on, you will always find in your hand money. Well, the soldier put on the gray coat and it turned into a bear skin. What the soldier didn't know was that the stranger was actually an evil sorcerer. The soldier now put on the bearskin coat, put his hands in the pockets to make sure there really was money there. And he went about the world chuckling in his good luck and buying whatever suited his fancy because he had plenty of money. One year went by and his appearance really didn't change too much. Oh, but by the second year, he began to look like a monster. His hair covered almost all of his face. His beard was long and dirty, almost like a piece of dirty cloth. 
His fingernails had grown long and they were like claws and his face was coated in dirt. Anybody who saw him ran away. The third year went by and then the fourth year he came to an inn where the landlord refused to take him in because he was so horrific looking. He wouldn't even let him stay in the barn where the horses were because he'd scare the horses. But Bearskin put his hand in his pocket and he pulled out gold coins. Well, with that, the landlord said, all right, but not in the barn. There's another outbuilding, go over there. But don't come out and don't show yourself to anybody because if you do, I'll never have any other customers again. So, Bearskin sat by himself that evening, wishing that the seven years were over. But what did he hear in the corner of a building? Somebody who was in even more agony than he was. There was a groan. Now, Bearskin was an old soldier and he had a compassionate heart. So he walked over to see where the noise was coming from and it was an old man and he was sobbing and wringing his hands. He was so upset. And as Bearskin stepped nearer, the old man jumped up in fear and said, don't hurt me, because <gasps> he recognized a monster. But Bearskin said, wait, wait, don't run away. And the old man recognized that there was a human voice in this monster, so he stayed. And over the course of the evening, they told each other their stories. The old man said, I've lost all my property. It's just me and my daughters. And we have no food. And soon we'll have no place to stay. Huh. If that's all you're worried about, said Bearskin, I have plenty of money. And he pulled a wallet out of his pocket and it was full of money and gold coins. And he handed it to the old man and he said, go, buy food for your family, buy your property back, all is well. The old man was so overcome with a thankfulness, he said, come home with me. You can stay with my daughters and I. You are certainly not a common man. That's true, but they will come to care for you. And so Bearskin did. He went home with the old man. Well, when the old man's oldest daughter saw him, ah, she ran screaming into the night because Bearskin looked so awful. The second daughter stopped, looked at Bearskin from head to toe and said, how can I share my home with someone who does not look the least bit human? Ha, huh. she walked off. But the youngest daughter said, Dear father, he must be a good man since he has helped us out of our troubles. And if you have promised him a place to stay, then I will help you. And it was a pity the man's face was covered with dirt and hair because no one could see how happy these words made him. Bearskin had been accepted by somebody and he took a ring off his finger and he broke it in half. And he gave the youngest daughter one half and he kept the other half for himself. On her half, he wrote his name and on his half, he wrote hers. He was afraid that if he stayed with the family too long, the evil sorcerer might bring a curse on them. So once he was rested up and had some food, he took his leave and said, for three more years, I must wander about. If I come back again, then we will celebrate. And after he was gone, the youngest sister thought about what kind of man would make such a bargain with an evil sorcerer and how hard up he must have been. And she realized he knew what poverty was like as much as she did. And yet he was still kind and generous with what he had. She came to love him even more when she thought about those qualities. Her sisters made fun of her. Oh, pay great attention when he shakes your hand, said the eldest, and you will see his beautiful claws. Take care, said the second, for bears are fond of sweets, and if you please him too much, ha, he'll eat you up because you're so sweet. You must mind and do his will, said the oldest, or he will begin growling at you. 
But the youngest sister kept silent and would not be drawn into their taunting and bullying. Meanwhile, Bearskin, he continued to wander about the world, doing good where he could and giving generously to all in need. And at last, as the end of the seven years approach, Bearskin went and sat again in the circle of trees where this whole adventure had begun. And in a very short time, the wind whistled and there stood the evil sorcerer right in front of him and he looked at him with an angry face he threw the soldier his old uniform coat and demanded his coat back in return not yet replied bearskin you must clean me up first well then the evil sorcerer whether he liked it or not had to fetch water and soap a comb and scissors and he took on the role of barber and he trimmed Bearskin's hair after he washed it. He shaved his face. He trimmed his nails. And when everything was done, well, Bearskin looked like a brave warrior and indeed was much handsomer than he had been seven years before. Well, as soon as he was done with all this, the evil sorcerer snapped and disappeared. And Bearskin became so happy and so lighthearted he went to the nearest town and he bought a brand new suit of clothes. And he rented a carriage drawn by four brown horses. And do you know where he went? He went straight to the house of the man who had befriended him. Well, of course, nobody knew who he was. The father thought he must be some celebrated general. And he led him into the room where all his daughters were. Well, the older girls saw this handsome man in his uniform and they wanted all his attention themselves. And so the soldier was compelled to sit down, oldest sister on one side, second sister on the other. And they offered him good things to eat and to drink for, they had never seen anyone so handsome before. But the youngest daughter sat across from him, not speaking a word. All she could think about was how kind Bearskin had been that his seven years was up now and he had not come back as promised. She thought perhaps he must have died and it made her very sad. Finally, the two older sisters and their father left the room and the stranger looked around and when he realized they were gone, he saw that he was just with the youngest daughter, the one he loved and he pulled something out of his pocket. He slid it across the table, and it was the half a ring that he had written her name on. <gasps> when the youngest daughter saw what was there, <gasps> she got so excited, she pulled out her half the ring, which she had been wearing as a necklace tied to a ribbon. She held them together, and they joined each other perfectly. The stranger said, you first saw me as bearskin, but now I have regained my human form, and this is who I really am. And with those words, they hugged and they kissed, and right then the two oldest sisters came back in the room. And as soon as they saw that the very handsome man was in love with their youngest sister, and they heard that he was the same person as Bearskin, they ran out of the house full of rage and jealousy, never to be seen again. And that is the story of Bearskin. Let's finish with our song. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. It's time to say goodbye. See you next week for story time.